Welcome to the lecture on job design and analysis. In this lecture, we will be looking at explaining the need for job design and analysis, looking at the different ways in which motivating work can be designed, the different products that are derived from job analysis being the job description, the job specification and the uses of both, and lastly to reflect on the value of job design and analysis for the promotion of an integrated approach to human resource management. Let's first start by looking at what the need for job design is. Now dividing work into jobs means that work, which is defined as the effort directed towards producing or accomplishing particular results, are divided into jobs and jobs being the grouping of tasks, duties and responsibilities that constitute the total work assignment for an employee. What we use in dividing or making decisions about how jobs should be divided is firstly the workflow analysis. And by using a workflow analysis, the organization can establish whether there are too many steps involved to making different jobs. This requires maybe the redefining of tasks, duties, and responsibilities of several jobs. Re-engineering business processes may involve the improvement of activities such as through product development or customer service or service delivery. Re-engineering may ultimately require the use of work teams, training employees to do more than one job and reorganizing operations, workflow and offices to simplify and speed up the work. External organization factors that influence job design may include environmental uncertainty, the availability and introduction of new technology, and the profile of the labor market within which the organization operates. The internal organization factors may relate to the management and leadership style, as well as the technology available within the organization and the system that it uses. This brings us to the question of what job design actually is. It can be defined as the manipulation of the content, functions and relationships of jobs in a way that both accomplishes organizational goals and satisfies the personal needs of individual job holders. So let's look at the different dimensions of job design. The job design being the manipulation of the content, the functions and the relationships of jobs in a way that both accomplishes organizational goals and satisfies the personal needs of individual job holders. The content may relate to the variety, the autonomy, the difficulty or the complexity that is involved in each of the tasks, whereas the functions relate to the authority the coordination and the responsibility given for every task. Relationships will then relate to relationships with others, teamwork within projects and relationship opportunities that may exist. An employee's favorable reaction to job design might mean greater accomplishment, greater job satisfaction, less absenteeism, increased productivity, fewer grievances and a lower labor turnover level. There are three basic approaches that can be used in job design. The first being the specialization in intensive job. Now this is usually used for uh, persons who work in a call center or that occupy a data entry position. It's based on the scientific management approach developed by Frederick Taylor, and it describes the management role in job design as a three step process. The first being the manager determines the one best way of performing the job. The manager hires individuals according to their abilities and the management then trains the employees in order to in the one best way in which the job should be performed. However, this may lead to a problem of over specialization, of repetition, of mechanical pacing, 
uh, little social interaction, no input from the employees, and that the job dimensions and job scope may be limited. The motivation intensive job approach uh, finds its basis in modern management, which has found that the increased cost of employee absenteeism and turnover, as well as decreased productivity and quality, may outweigh the advantages of a highly specialized job. The challenge is to balance employees' human needs with the employer's economic goals. And this may be done through job rotation, which is the process of shifting an employee from job to job, or job enlargement, which is a change in the scope of a job to provide greater variety to an employee, more tasks are added on the same level, or through job enrichment, which is enhancing a job by adding more meaningful tasks and duties to make the work more rewarding or satisfying. More tasks are added, but no more advanced, but on a more advanced level, meaning a vertical expansion of the job. The third approach is the socio-technical approach and is based on two premises, that an organization or a work unit is a combined social plus technical system, and that this system is open in relation to its environment. The most popular application of this approach can be found in self-managed work teams that are also known as high-performance work teams. Controlling schedules, dividing up tasks, learning multiple jobs, and training one another are typical responsibilities of self-managed work teams. Some of the newer approaches to job design include total quality management, which is a philosophy aimed towards the continual improvement of the quality of products, services of the organization and its processes to meet or even exceed the expectations of its customers and clients. Thus, it is based on uh, basic principles, connecting quality management systems to organizational processes and encouraging a natural progression towards improved organizational performance via using quality management principles, adopting a process approach, emphasizing the role of top management, setting requirements for establishing measurable objectives at relevant functions and levels, orientating the organization towards continual improvement and customer satisfaction, including monitoring information about customer satisfaction as a measure of system performance, considering statutory and regulatory requirements, and paying attention to resource availability. There are very specific issues that may influence job design. The first being robotics. Now, robotics has the ability to make the work environment more adaptable. And with the, the fourth industrial revolution, the possibilities of robotics uh, can ex be explored by organizations to increase their productivity. Ergonomics is the second issue, and it is an approach to designing equipment and systems within work environments to ensure that employees can use them easily and efficiently. Productivity measures are the measures of the output of goods and services directly relative to the input of labor, material and equipment. Thus, the three major components that are looked at here would be utilization, efficiency and effectiveness. Work schedules is another issue, um, and here we can think about flexi time. Flexi time has been particularly beneficial to service organizations, saving in employee turnover, absenteeism, and lateness. The last would be alternative work physical work locations. Here we can think about telecommuting and the benefits of telecommuting. For instance, uh, by making sure that the homework delivers significant benefits to the supervisor and the organization, by staying flexible, 
by cultivating the manager's active support for the home arrangement, by training managers to adjust their management style, and keeping in touch and interested with those that are telecommuting. So these constitute the major job design issues and decisions. Let's proceed to looking at the nature of job analysis. Job analysis can be seen as the systematic way to gather and analyze information about the content, context, and the human requirements of the job. Why is job analysis important? There are certain new realities that organizations need to consider, such as organizational restructuring due to downsizing that calls for basic changes and who does what, where and with what. The need to motivate and reward people, especially managers and professionals, on the basis of what they know along with their traditional job objectives. The impact of technology, particularly information technology, on jobs throughout the organization. Labor legislation pertaining to employment equity and general discriminatory practices. And the implementation of teams. Here, functional domains disappear and work is bundled into teams. These teams normally have greater depth and breadth of skills than would have been required in traditional jobs. How is job analysis done? It starts with a committee review. And the committee usually comprises representatives from the labor unions, from the major departments in the organization to be studied, and members from the professional bodies of which employees are members. They work in a workplace forum together with the HR department and the job analyst, and this committee reviews information about each job within the organization and then makes difficult decisions in comparing job factors such as relative responsibility or working conditions. The committee needs the cooperation of both employees and supervisors during information gathering. The reason for having each department represented is to allow committee members to report back to their departments about how the job analysis process will take place and to reassure fellow employees that it will be accurate and fair. There are a variety of ways to collect this information, but the most general ones are site observation, interviews, questionnaires, and diaries. After which the information will be reviewed. The information review, regardless of the method selected to collect information, is to assemble and review that information with the employees and the job analysis committee has been successfully done. After writing a first draft of the information collected, the analyst needs to make sure that the data are factually correct and complete and that a clear picture of the job is presented. Product completion is the fourth step and that involves the completion of whatever product would be desired by management. This could, for instance, be the job description or the job specification, but job design may also be used for job evaluation, for salary and wage uh, purposes, to determine training and development needs and to create tests for employee selection. For the purpose of our unit here, we will be looking at job description. Now, a job description is a written summary of the task requirements for a particular job and may be used for purposes of recruitment, interviewing, orientation, training, job design, wage or sal salary surveys, performance appraisals, health and safety, or outplacement. The elements in the job description include the title of the job, the location of the job, the title of the immediate supervisor, the job status and pay grade or pay range, as well as the content of the job that is described in the duties and the responsibilities section. 
The content must be evaluated for pay considerations because job titles can be misleading. An administrative assistant in one organization may be quite different from one in another organization. The job specification is the statement of the knowledge, skills and abilities that are required of the person who is to perform the job. The last step in the job analysis procedure will be to determine how the information will be stored for future use. The HR department should have access to this information in case of additional end products are desired. Also, the job analysis committee will need to determine how to update the information periodically because information gathered in the job analysis process has a tendency to become obsolete over time. Within the current public sector environment, the requirement is that job descriptions and specifications should be updated every three to five years. This brings us to the end of this particular lecture and the end of week four. Well done and I will see you soon.